coincidental. Yeah. All right. Judith Brown Dianis of the Advancement Project. The, the, I, I want to get into the Voting Rights Act because I think one of the things that I think is, is important in thinking about what's happening in Florida and other states is that people will say, uh, for instance, Rick Scott. Let me let me play Rick Scott t t saying that he's he's not he's not targeting anyone, right? That whatever disparate impact of this, that's just an accident. Take take a look. I can't imagine anybody. I mean. Anybody would target anybody. I think. I think what your expectation is is that your government makes sure that it does everything they can to have fair elections. That that um, only people that are registered to vote vote. And, and the brilliance of the Voting Rights Act is that it recognizes that the history of voter pr uh, suppression and disenfranchisement of African Americans in particular has been a history of policies that can be called race neutral, neutral right? right? A literacy test doesn't That's say right. if you're black you can't vote, right? A poll tax doesn't say. Yeah. And so it looks at the disparate impact and I think That's it's just right. key to keep hitting that point because you can always defend these policies in racially neutral terms. We're just trying mm -hmm. to ensure the integrity. How does how does the the getting rid of third party registra registrars and registration drives run up against the Voting Rights Act? Right. Well, it, it runs up against the Voting Rights Act because any time that you have a policy that you put in place that disproportionately impacts people of color, um, it's, you know, it, it gives you a look, the evidence that, in fact, there was a, there might be a discriminatory intent. But you don't have to show that the legislature set out with right. the intent. It's just that the impact it fell disproportionately on people of color. And in this particular case with registration, really the, the information shows, the evidence shows that in fact African Americans and Latinos actually tend to register through these voter registration drives um, more than anyone else. And that if you roll back voter registration drives in the League of Women Voters and Rock the Vote and NAACP, for example, can't do voter registration drives, it makes it harder for blacks and Latinos to vote. And so that's why it falls under the Voting Rights Act. And I'll tell you that you're, you're right, Chris. I mean, it's, you know, when we look at literacy tests, it's not like, you know, literacy tests were passed by states and, you know, in every state they said, we're trying to target black people. We don't want them to vote. <laughs> Instead, it was that they just put these laws on the books knowing who it would target, right. just like voter ID. If you look at voter ID in Wisconsin, where we actually have a voting rights lawsuit, um, under the Voting Rights Act, you know, we brought that case because 78 percent of black males between the ages of 18 and 24 do not have state issued photo ID mm -hmm. in Wisconsin and so it has an impact on blacks and Latinos and we actually think that legislatures knew this they knew who they were going to impact in the end of it so but I don't need to care about the intent as right, long as right. I show the impact that's enough Ready. so why so but you know taking this a step back we should be trying to encourage people to vote, not right. trying to take their rights away. And so that's why since 2010, it's like you see state after state after state have done these voter ID laws, voter suppression laws. Florida and Wisconsin were the worst case, in my judgment. And the, thank God for the Department of Justice, thank God for the NAACP, right. because they came in and they said, stop well, it. And, well, I have a question for you, so, Judith, on, on mm -hmm. that point. It's Michael Steele. Um, to the point that was just made about uh, the Justice Department and others, what, what, is, what is the ultimate adjudication here? I mean, where, where are the indictment of election, election officials? Where are the indictment of election uh, programs or strategies by the Justice Department, or more importantly, by a federal, federal court or, or the Supreme Court? How do you mm -hmm. see this being played out from a judicial perspective if there is this, this wholesale assault on the Voting Rights Act um, and, and people feel that they're being disenfranchised. How is that getting played out in the courts ultimately? Well, I mean, I think we'll see over the, ne the next few months because there are a number of cases pending. So we're involved in cases in uh, in Texas. We have a case in Wisconsin, Wisconsin, and we have a case in Pennsylvania, which is actually under their state constitution, um, not the Voting Rights Act. But I mean, it's important that we'll, we will see because this really hasn't played out before. Like the Indiana right. law that passed was actually under the constitution. Mm -hmm. Now we're finally seeing the numbers and we're seeing what the impact is. 
so that we're able to bring these Voting Rights Act cases. Well, and it's deal. really important that the Department of Justice actually has stepped up, yeah. and we're we're very excited by that. When we actually sent them Advancement Project a um, a letter about these Florida purges on May 17th, saying to them, "Hey, this is happening in Florida. We need you to stand up because actually they are covered. Florida has several counties that are covered by good. Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, and so they have to go before justice to actually get it approved. And so the Department of Justice just the end of last week stepped up and said to Florida, in fact, Advancement Project is right. They didn't say that in their letter. But, actually, <laughs> but, but, I say. but they should have. Um, Advancement specific. Project is right. You have to come before justice and get this approved. And by the way, let's, let's add this to what um, Scott has done. Um, in fact, you can't purge people under the National Voter Registration Act within 90 days of, of an election. Right. So why the last minute change of the game? Why the last minute purges? I think we know the answer. Right. Yeah, well, DOJ, it's also important, is challenging new voter restrictions also in Texas and South Carolina, which are among the worst in the country. But it's also important to note that Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, which is what the DOJ used to challenge the Florida law and in other states, that is being challenged by at least six different Republican states. There was just an appeals court verdict in Shelby County, Alabama, that upheld Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, which basically forces states to get approval from the federal government. But this is going to the Supreme right. Court, yes. and the Supreme Court oh, could yeah. very well overturn Section 5, and that could be an absolute yeah. catastrophe for voting rights. Section, Section, Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act 1965 creates a special set of procedures in which right. the Department of Justice and the federal government has to clear, pre-clear, any changes to, to, to voting laws in the covered states, which are the states and some of the counties of the old if the Supreme Court, No, they've already hinted right. that they might do it. If this happened, this would be the Citizens United for Voting right. Rights. Well, Judith, Judith absolutely... Brown Dianis, civil rights attorney and co-director of the Advancement Project. Thanks for joining us this morning. Ari Berman. Thanks for having me, Chris. It's great to have you. Ari Berman, political <laughs> Correspondent for The Nation magazine. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right. What did two mild-mannered wonks say that seems to have gotten them thrown out of D.C. polite society? That's next. <laughs>